And uh, I don't know how many of uh, you know topology optimization. First, I will give a brief introduction on topology optimization method. Then I will move on to discuss uh, uh, design materials uh, use topology optimizations uh, for small, consider small uh, strings for linear elasticity problems. And then after that, I will move on to design uh, to talk about how one can design materials uh, with a constant boson ratios uh, for consider large deformations. Uh, at the last part of my talk, we'll discuss uh, the design material with, with a tunable stiffness and buckling uh, response use topology optimization. So, I would like to introduce topology optimization method use the well-known applications that design the uh, frame frames in airplane wings. Okay. And then for, for the design problem, first we decide where we would like to design uh, our structures. After that, we could use some numerical approach to discretize the design domains. Uh, then based on this discretization, we can introduce uh, design variables for each locations to represent the material occupations at that locations. Stella, can you see my mouse? Yes, I can. Okay, great. Yeah. And then um, this material, uh, this the design variable represents the material occupations uh, at that locations. Normally in our group, we use finite element uh, method. After we discretize, this material occupation also represent your structure topologies. And then we can perform um, finite element uh, simulations to get a structure response. Then based on the structure response, we can evaluate uh, the properties uh, in terms of required properties. It's a structure uh, response. Based on the structure performance, then we can iteratively update the uh, design variables, which in other words, we update the structure uh, topologies such that we achieve our desired properties. This animation shows the um, uh, topology optimization histories for these uh, uh, RIP designs. After we reach optimized uh, structures, we can perform interpretations to get the fabricated ones. They further move on to fabrication and uh, experimental verifications. Actually, what uh, homogeneous uh, topology does is uh, this part. To summarize, the topology optimization procedure can be described use this uh, flowchart. For a design domain, we first discretize it, and for each element, if you use finite element, we introduce a design variables to represent the material occupations at that element. Then based on the material occupation of that element, uh, of each element, we can perform a finite element uh, analysis uh, or finite volumes analysis to get the structure response and evaluate the performance of the structures in terms of uh, figure of merit, which you wanted to evaluate, for example, it can be compliance or stress. And then based on the, after that, we also can, of course, we also can formulate some constraints. Then we can perform sensitivity analysis of the um, objective or constraints with respect to our, our design variables. And to use, uh, normally the sensitivity analysis is then uh, use a joint sensitivity analysis stated by those equations. I will not go to details. Um, then for, uh, for people who are interested, you can find uh, in Wool and uh, Martin's book. And then after sensitivity analysis, one can do regular regularization like filtering or impulse line skills. And um, based on the gradient, we can use um, optimization algorithm to update um, the design variables. Then which means when the, up, uh, the design variable are updated, we get a new structure topologies. And then we check whether this um, optimization procedure can work. If not, then we repeat the whole procedures until we get the optimized designs. And which means our convergence uh, criteria is fulfilled. 
And then we can output our designs, and uh, which also indicate we get the final topology. So this is a whole procedure of uh, top topology optimizations. And it has been a hot topic uh, in topology optimization community to, uh, to design novel materials, uh, novel materials with extreme properties, like um, materials, also tropic material with negative thermal expansions shows by this uh, figure. And we can see in contrary to conventional material, when we warm it up, it will expand. These materials will shrink as shows by these animations. Another topic is to design um, material with negative Boson ratios. And when you, which means when you stretch the material, it will expand in another direction. This, this also called aesthetic materials. Aesthetic material can use, for example, in the helmet to absorb the energies from the impact. So, how we can realize material designs? Basically, it's described by here. Um, it, we call it inverse homogenization. First, we, we, we have a desired property, for example, maximum bulk, bulk modulus or neg negative boson ratios. Uh, with this desired property at hand, we would like to see uh, which microstructure, periodic microstructure configuration has such a uh, desired uh, properties. Then after we figure out the microstructure topologies or uh, configurations, we, we periodic, periodically uh, place this uh, microstructure together, then we get our optimized structure uh, materials. So the main um, point in, to in material designs is use topology optimization or tailored, uh, no, aesthetic material use topology optimization is this part. Then we have desired property, we try to figure out what's the optimized configuration which uh, possess the desired properties. In order to uh, do that, we need some uh, uh, method to evaluate the mat effective material properties. Normally, it's a homogenization method. So for in, in macroscopic microstructure levels, it's inhomogeneous. But in global level, in macroscopic level, we can treat it as a homogeneous materials. The relation between these two materials is that the stiff, no, the stress at the homogeneous effective materials equal to the volume average uh, stress over the microscopic uh, microstructures, and the stress also equal to the volume um, average stress. And the relation between effective uh, stress and effective uh, strength will give us uh, the effective uh, hook matrix of the materials. Similarly, we can do the same. Uh, um, uh, we can calculate the effective uh, thermal expansion coefficient, use those equations. And this, the calculation of effective uh, property, uh, properties is called homogenization approach. Then after we get the effective material properties, we can uh, formulate our objective to optimize, for example, material properties like boson ratios or buckling strength, bulk modulus, damping thermal expansion and the band gap and extra. We can also design material with the prescribed properties like try to minimize the, the errors between actual and uh, the prescribed one. Or we can design materials for, uh, for, uh, for nonlinear problems, consider large deformations. Of course, at the same time, we can have a certain constraints like uh, isotropic uh, constraints, bulk modulus uh, requirement, and uh, minimal uh, effective stress, actual. Uh, before, uh, the material design mainly focus on linear problems, assume a small deformation. And this, is, this shows um, the topology optimized designs with a single line skew and with two line skews. And the, oh, sorry. No, it's a, it's a, and the solid lines uh, indicate the theoretical bound of the uh, of achievable 
um, effective uh, share and bulk, bulk modulus. And the, we can see some topology optimization, uh, 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 topology uh, optimized materials approach the theoretic bond and lie on there. And um, in order to design a uh, negative thermal expansion coefficient, we need to distribute in the periodic uh, uh, microstructures three phase materials. One is air, another one is a stiff material and soft material. And then this, uh, this two phase material has different thermal expansion coefficient. This is one optimized isotropic uh, material with negative uh, thermal expansions, as I showed before. This is animation illustrated. It does when you warm up, it shrink. And um, this is the, 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 the old bound for effective thermal expansion coefficient as a function of uh, effective bulk modulus. And those are designs obtained use topology optimization approach. This one has the uh, ne negative uh, thermal expansion. This has uh, zero thermal expansion. This is optimized for maximal um, uh, thermal, exp uh, thermal uh, expansion coefficients. And then these lines indicate the newest uh, uh, theoretical up bound for thermal um, uh, some expansion coefficient. We can see uh, topology optimized structures lie on top of theoretic predictions. And besides design negative thermal um, expansion coefficient, one can design material with uh, negative boson ratios. To do that, we still like uh, use homogenization method to evaluate the material properties. One can um, achieve negative boson ratio by minimizing the boson ratios of the materials with the uh, constraints on bulk modulus. This shows one well-known fishbone designs which has a negative boson ratio effect, uh, boson ratios. When you compress it, it will compress in another direction. This uh, um, design has been fabricated and experimentally verif uh, verified uh, in 2D, uh, in 2D. And one of course can design uh, 3D materials with uh, negative boson ratios. This is uh, one of the uh, one designs with is the isotropic material with negative boson ratios um, to minus 0 0.5. This is a slide view of it. We can see in Inside the macro structure, 3D macro structures, the slide views resembling the 2D configurations. Well, it's a fishbone configurations, and this uh, uh, is the fabric example, and this is the experiment uh, test. And um, we can see the here the black line indicate the prescribed boson ratios and. Uh, the blue line is the measurement and, uh, and the dash dot and dash line indicates the errors. We can see in general the new experiment verifications match well with the numerical predictions. However, now it's come to uh, interesting uh, questions. Previous design has been um, performed consider five uh, small strings. If we stretch the examples much, how will this uh, material perform for finite strings? I did a numerical test. Basically, I tried to stretch it up to 30% in terms of uh, uh, strings. We can see for the well-known fish bones, the boson ratios shows uh, highly nonlinear profiles with respect to uh, strings. It's even become positive as after certain uh, strings. Also the stress. In the coming part, I would present the optimization procedures to design a material with constant boson ratios over a certain string range for finite uh, deformations.
In order to do that, first we need a, a numerical model to evaluate the boson ratios in the tension test. Um, because we know it's a periodic materials, we still use these uh, periodic microstructures. We can mimic the tension test, which means you, you, you stretch the microstructures to a certain displacement and you measure the deformations along uh, vertical directions here. And the, if we know how much uh, displacement we stretched and uh, how much the uh, deformation in vertical direction, we can define a sentient boson ratio, uh, like use these equations. Mathematically, such a, uh, such a uh, problem can be described with a boundary condition of the unit cell described by these equations. For these two phase, we, uh, for uh, nodal pairs, we assume them have a, a constant longitudinal displacement difference U and same vertical displacement. And for a uh, node pair aligned on this edge, we have we have um, same displacement along longitudinal directions, but have a constant displacement difference along vertical directions. And then the second boson ratios, the second boson ratio will define by these equations. So now we have an approach, we can evaluate the performance of a, of a material and uh, a tension test when we consider finite strains. So I use this, uh, I use the microstructure model to evaluate the well-known fishbone uh, negative boson ratios. This design is um, uh, obtained <coughs> from a linear, uh, linear elasticities. And it's uh, close to be isotropic. And, uh, but this graph shows the Boson ratio profiles of these materials, when we consider finite history, we can see the boson ratios actually has a highly nonlinearity respect to the strains. So the coming part, I would like to formulate an optimization problem such that we can design a material which shows a constant, constant of uh, boson ratios. And the, the, therefore the objective is formulated to minimize the postgraduate boson ratio and the, the, the error between actual boson ratio and the postgraduate boson ratios with a requirement um, on the stiffness and the uh, uh, maximum volume can be used. I use um, total Lagrange uh, formulation to, formu uh, to model the problems and uh, use Newton Robson to solve the uh, equilibrium here. As I mentioned before, uh, the sensitivity of objective and constraints will be, uh, with respect to the design variable, will be obtained use a joint sensitivity analysis. And first, I would like to design a material without a symmetry. The first design I did is a, a linear material considered small strings without nonlinearity, without a, a large deformations. That's the structure. Um, that's the microstructure configuration because it looks like. And this image describes its uh, performance when we consider finite string and stretch it up to 0 0.3. And this configuration shows the optimized microstructure topologies when we mod, uh, we mod it as a nonlinear, uh, we will consider nonlinearity and uh, finite uh, deformations. And we can see here, it, this, this two microstructure, even though they share same topology, but the material configurations are quite different. And the optimized microstructures shows a constant uh, boson ratio profile and uh, finite deformations. We also can impose certain symmetries this is the plate symmetry imposed. This is a linear case, similar performance as the previous one. And this is the, the nonlinear cases, which of course has almost close to constant up to 30% uh, stretching. We would like to fabricate uh, the topology optimized structures, use the direct ink writings, even though it's possible uh, to fabricate uh, 
uh, examples with very sickness in using direct ink writings. However, it will be much easier for fabrication if we have a uniform feature size. In order to do that, uh, we performed a feature-based parameterization and further perform a shape optimization. So this microstructure configuration is, is further uh, parameterized use a super ellipse. In the super ellipse parameterizations, and each, each super ellipse is controlled by two nodes here. And all the super ellipse has the fixed uh, lens. By tuning the locations of this control point, we can change the, the microstructure configurations smoothly. So now our design variable become the control point loca locations. But luckily, due to the uh, symmetry in the microstructure configurations, our design variable is very limited. So this image shows the microstructure skeleton plot for uh, microstructures with uh, negative boson ratios. And this plot shows uh, the material configuration skeleton plot for material microstructures with uh, positive uh, boson ratios. Those, those, this set of the microstructure are designs uh, consider finite deformation uh, with uh, constraints up to 20, per, uh, no, with uh, strains up to 20% stretching. And these animations at, oh, actually describe the interpolated microstructure configurations with this nice set of the designs. How the, this image shows the least squares errors of both ratios with respect to the prescribed one. And this animation shows how the structure uh, skeleton evolutes as the boson ratio changes. We can see for all the interpolated uh, microstructures, we get on close to constant uh, boson ratios for a string up to 20%. This image shows the uh, the fabricated one and comparison with the designed one. In the first row is the optimized one. The second row is the fabricated uh, microstructures. And the last, uh, the last row shows the materials. This animation shows uh, the experiment setups. This material uh, is with a boson ratio equals to zero, zero, um, no, 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 minus 0.8. And, um, and this uh, image shows the deformation patterns of the positive, of the materials with a positive uh, boson ratios when it's stretched to 10% or 20%. We can see clearly it shrink in the vertical directions. And this shows the deformation patterns for optimized material with a boson ratio equal to minus 0 0.8. It's, it's, when you stretch it, it will expand in another direction. This um, image shows the performance comparisons between numerical simulations as, 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 and uh, experiment. And all the lines um, represent the numerical simulation result, and all the quant represent the experiment measures. We can see here in a um, person ratio interval from minus 0 0.8 up to 0 0.8, the experiment uh, matched quite well with uh, the numerical uh, predictions. One, of course, can design 3D authentic materials with the negative boson ratios. First the design, I still consider uh, small strings use a linear elasticity uh, series. We can see uh, this animation shows uh, the deformation patterns when you stretch the microstructures. We can see when, the, when you stretch the microstructures, the 
the tips get flat and flatter, so which and it's it gets saturated, and the Boltzmann ratio uh, become uh, larger and larger and approach to approach to zero. If we optimize the macrostructure, consider finite deformations. This is the, the optimized designs we have. We we stretch these macrostructures. Actually, it will not not it will not be saturated. Therefore, it's a, shows a constant Boson ratios. Due to the <coughs> macrostructure, uh, macros, uh, macrostructure symmetries, we can actually, this um, type of uh, macrostructures can be described, use the, this type of, um, this uh, cross-sectional uh, configurations. As in 2D, we can use uh, cylinders to parameterize. Then here we only this macrostructure only controls by four point where one, where two, where three, where four, and so the, this is the locations of, of this four point. Luckily, we here we only have two design variables. It's the x location of where one, where two, and the y location of where three, and this is the mapped uh, geometries, the macrostructure geometries. Then for Use this uh, parameterization, we can further perform a shape optimization by designing the x-y uh, variables. And then this image shows the designs for different uh, Boson ratios. And based on these uh, five uh, designs, we can, for any given negative Boson ratio, we can further interpolate it and get uh, the corresponding x-y values. Then we can get we can map the geometries, the corresponding macrostructure geometries, and then we can then based on the mapped geometry, macrostructure geometry, we can further evaluate uh, the Boson ratios and the this image describes the average the Boson ratios for a string of twenty percent, and so this shows the standard deviations. We can see uh, all the interpolated macrostructures has a uh, a uh, constant um, Boson ratios over 20% uh, uh, strings. So that's uh, for that. That's for the uh, for the designs of material with um, uh, constant Boson ratio. Consider finite deformations. And then next, I will talk about uh, Taylor material with uh, stiffness and. Um, uh, buckling response. It has been a long time um, people wanted to seek for mark materials, lower materials with maximum uh, stiffness. And there's a paper published even in uh, 2017, which uh, from back, they declared they, they find uh, optimal sti stiffness, stiffness optimal isotropic plate structures, which lie on the uh, theoretic predict bound. However, stiffness only measures the uh, material resistant to the deformation. It's only one, st one part of the material design. Another part of the material design rely on the ultimate uh, load capacity of the materials, which is described by the strength of the material. Strength of material can be yield strings or buckling strings. In my talk, I only uh, cover the buckling strings here. In order to, to um, evaluate the material buckling strings, one has to um, perform a material buckling analysis for a periodic uh, materials. The material can buckle in different uh, buckling patterns. For example, it's cell periodic bu buckling or global shear buckling or anti periodic buckling. How could we de de determine the material buckling strength? Actually, the material buckling strength is determined by the lowest possible buckling load, which can obtain use the microstructures, periodic microstructures. So we we perform, same as before, we use a homogenization modules and um, to evaluate the performance of the mark structures. And we apply block flow key with series on the macro structure, try to capture all the possible buckling mode. 
use this equation. P R K is a wave vectors which which describe how many wave numbers in one period. And if we seek we seek from zero to two pi over the whole space, we can find the lowest possible buckling load. Then that represent um, the material buckling strength. However, computationally, it's very heavy, and um, numerical. Numerical experience tell us we don't need to go through the full, full, full domains based on the symmetry of the load and the symmetry of the geometry of your mark structures. There are smallest representative, uh, representative domains which call um, irreducible Brillouin zones. One can go through here. And more numerical experience tell us we even don't need to go inside. We only can, we only need to search the key vector along the edge, and then we can estimate the material buckling strength. As we see here, the global shear mood actually is lying here, and this is a cell periodic which lie at the center, and this antiperiodic lying here and the buckling mode here. If we search all the key vectors along the irreducible Boolean zones, we can build a band diagram uh, from the linear buckling analysis and the smallest uh, uh, ending values represent the material buckling strength. To be more clear, I, I, tried, I will explain you in these um, procedures. So we have a periodic uh, material then we take uh, um, one unit cell, and um, this unit cell may have uh, some uh, geometric symmetry. And uh, here in my study, I mainly consider cubic uh, symmetries. And we perform homogenization to get the effective material buckling, uh, uh, to get effective uh, material properties. And then afterwards, we perform a linear buckling analysis to estimate the material buckling strength depends on its hydrostatic compression or uni actual compressions. One can seek on di di different uh, irreducible Boolean zones and, formula and calculate the band diagram and get the smallest possible buckling uh, stress, which is the material buckling strength. So <clears throat> a little bit more details I, for a uh, global uh, microscopic stress. Here we need to convert it to a local element-wide stress. Use these formulations. Then, based on the local stress, we formulate a stress um, a stiffness matrix and perform a linear buckling analysis and with a block flow key bond conditions. This is a, a hollow sphere. This is the band diagram for hydrostatic uh, compressions. This is a, a band diagram of um, unit actual compressions. We can took the se several designs from the literature and uh, these designs are declared to have a uh, optimal stiffness. Why is the optimal truss, simple cubic truss structures and why is the simple cubic plate and then is the isotropic truss and isotropic uh, plate. And the isotropic plate and the simple cubic plate are declared to obtain the optimal Yash modulus lie on the theoretic predictions. And this graph shows the band diagram for each of them. This is for isotropic plate, uh, simple cube, uh, isotropic truss and simple cubic plate and uh, simple cube. No, this is simple cubic plate and this second cubic truss. We can see different uh, macro structures, even though, for example, this ha has optim optimal Yash modulus. However, it shows much lower uh, buckling uh, stress strength among these four. And for a different uh, volume fractions, one can perform uh, same uh, numerical evaluations. And we actually get a two-term interpolation schemes for different type of microstructures. These two terms uh, interpolation scheme for Yash modulus, buckling strings, and yield strings. It is, <clears throat> gives much better and much accurate uh, 
predictions, uh, Yash modulus and factor strings and yield strings of the materials. And then it can be accurate up to 50%. And this work has been published uh, here. We also, in this paper, have much more co material configurations. When, if you are interested, you can check here. Now we know how to evaluate uh, the Young's modulus and the buckling strings. We can formulate an uh, optimization uh, formulations to design material with uh, tunable stiffness and uh, um, buckling string response. So it's formulated to minimize the weighted, uh, the, weight, the weighted functions of inverse of buckling string and inverse of Yosh modulus. Uh, this is a buckling string analysis. This is the, the equations for homogenization. Of course, we can have an uh, isotropic requirement AR. It's called thin numbers. If the thin AR equal to one, it means isotropic. At the same time, we have a volume fraction constraints. Uh, I will give a slightly more details um, on these uh, formulations, a little bit more. Then we use, first we use uh, a joint sensitivity analysis to get the sensitivity of objective and constraints with respect to the design variable. I also use the Q11 element to more accurate represent the stretch situation in the microstructures. Here in this study, I'm mainly interested uh, in single skill um, with microstructure configuration. Therefore, I impose a length scale about 0 0.02. And the volume fracturing I consider is 20%. And um, the length scale is imposed to use robust formulation. I will not uh, go more details on how one do this, but if anybody is interested, you can uh, go and to have, have a look on our, um, our preprint uh, in archive. Based on the band diagram, the optimi optimization to design microstructure with enhanced buckling strings is to push the lowest possible buckling, uh, buckling strings further up. This animation shows optimization history for a 2D, uh, 2D microstructures. We can see actually the optimizer try to push uh, all the buckling band further up so that, that they clasp together and which make all the buckling which make all the buckling mode with different uh, less uh, wavelengths buckle as simultaneously. And this also indicate it has the best use of all the possible materials. This is a final configuration. Okay, I think I already tell um, all the theories behind and uh, all the optimization formulation. Now we started to uh, optimize microstructures with uh, enhanced buckling stream first. So the, in the first case, um, I tried to design a microstructure with uh, <clears throat> maximum buckling strength and uh, hydrostatic loading. The initial guess is the hollow spheres. This is the uh, optimized uh, configurations. It, first of all, it's isotropic um, microstructures. And this is a slide view. We can see we only have a one, uh, it's a single length scale. So there's no hierarchical patterns deformed. And these microstructures have well defined length scales also. This is the critical buckling mode for the microstructure. And this band diagram, we can see it's a, a rich uh, 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 buckling strings, which is four times as the initial guess. Based on the uh, optimization formulations, we can design a uh, microstructure with maximum Young's modulus. And we also can design uh, materials with maximum um, buckling strings. Here I consider only uh, buckling strings for unit actual compressions because we wanted to do experiment. And then we can see the f this one shows the optimized configuration with the maximum Young's modulus. Uh, and this is the corresponding band diagrams and the, band, uh, the buckling patterns. I wanted to uh, um, 
they clear here, this, this uh, optimized configuration actually is a sub uh, modulus optimal compared to with the isotropic place structures, the rest phase one. This is because the, our required lens use is much big, bigger than the lens view in the isotropic place structure. And so this is uh, the designs, the optimized uh, material designs for, with uh, maximum buck, uh, buckling strengths and unit actual uh, loadings. And this is um, the performance. We can see at a small cost of the Yosh modulus, we can double the buckling strengths use turbo load optimizations. So this uh, image shows the detailed geometry configurations. We can see com the the orange part is the geometry shared by two, these two optimized uh, microstructures. And the yellow part is the part owned by uh, optimized uh, microstructure with maximum Yash modulus. And the purple part is um, the geometry owned only by the optimized microstructure with uh, maximum bulk mod uh, no, buckling strength. We can see the comparison shows that the uh, the material with enhanced buckling strength would like have a slightly curved plate, also have a quite thick members. Uh, so this indicates that material buckling strength is uh, enhanced by a line curve, curved uh, curved uh, plate and uh, member thickness. All these two effects actually enhanced the bending stiffness of the microstructures, which lead to a high buckling strength and unit actual loading. As we as you might notice, all the topology. At, optimized uh, uh, microstructure actually is, has some uh, small details and uh, we would like to further to simplify that. Similar like uh, in authentic material designs, what do we do actually these uh, configurations can be parameterized, use a hollow uh, super ellipsoid, use a file uh, set. Um, S5 is to represent the whole punch over here, S2 is represent the plate line here, S3 is represent the surface here, and S1 is represent those features, and S4 to represent this. This is a shape parameterized configurations. It looks much clean compared with this one. And uh, actually, this image describes the, the whole procedures together with S2, S3, S4 together form the main body of the mark structure like here. And uh, S1 is to represent these features. And S5 is used to punch holes. This is uh, illustrate the generation of the one eighth of the microstructure. And then based on the parameterization, we can further perform uh, shape optimization to optimize the mark structures. This is uh, the optimized max structure with uh, maximum Yash modulus. This is uh, the optimized max structures with uh, maximized buckling strength. And this table shows the different uh, the performance. We can see actually, I want to think, I wanted to mention actually this um, optim this design has the worst buckling strength and unit actual um, uh, compressions. It's also indicated by its step band diagram. It's all the three critical uh, mode classed together. And then all the uh, buckling mode with different wavelength lengths also happens simultaneously. And um, this is the optim optimized one. It has much better performance. Okay, by change the weight gamma, we can design uh, materials with different uh, stress, uh, no, stiffness and uh, buckling strain response. These solid lines and uh, this set describe the topology optimized designs, and these lines together with these designs uh, describe the shape optimized designs, which has a much simpler geometry, I think, it's easy to fabricate. And those are uh, reference design. We can see compared with the reference design, the optimized uh, designs has a better buckling uh, strains. Uh, buckling strains. However, as I already mentioned, due to the requirement of lens use, we didn't manage to go up to the maximum uh, Yash modulus here. 
I think that's all for my talk. Thanks for listening.